Hi guys, welcome to my channel. And this le lecture video is about calculating the moment of inertia of complicated figures. You know for a fact that centroidal moment of inertia is a very important value in structural engineering, a very important property of a section because you are using it to calculate the stresses in beams, calculating the slenderness ratio of a column. But the problem here, calculation of this property of section is a very tedious task. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you a technique to calculate it fast and efficient. I'm going to show you guys how to calculate the centroidal moment of inertia of figures without holes and figures with holes. Especially if, you're, if you have a beam and there is a hole and you want to put something else there, no? So, guys, I released this video because some of the students know how to use this technique, but many of them are not aware, especially for figures with holes. If you are using the technique, which is using the standard deviation, you really have to watch my video. So for you to note what is the limitations of this technique and where to use it efficiently. Before going to the technique, I'm going to show you first the conventional way of solving this. To refresh you if you already forgot how to solve this one so this is a good uh, lecture video especially today in this pandemic <laughs> pandemic era okay so let us start determine the centroidal moment of inertia for the cross section of the beam as shown the first thing to do divide the section into its Composite figures with known areas, centroids, all of the different properties. It means, before watching this video, you must learn how to locate the centroid of common figures such as triangles, circles, and rectangles. Uh, before you get the centroidal moment of inertia, of course, if you're using the conventional way of solving this, you have to locate first the neutral axis of the section, which is technically the centroid of the whole section. So how are you going to, to do this? I think you're using the variance theorem, but what is the first thing to do? Establish a initial reference line. So most of the normal person will use the most bottom part of the section as the reference line. And of course, after doing that, you have to locate all of the centroids of each figure from the reference lines as shown in the video, right? And then you're going to use the Barignon theorem, which is total area times y bar. So the y bar that we are talking about here in this video, which is on the left side of the equation, is basically the location of the neutral axis. And the a on the left side of this equation is basically the total area of the figure. So let me have a laser pointer here for me to show it to you. So th this A is the total area of the whole section. Y bar is the location of the neutral axis or the center of the whole section from the reference line. And this one, summation A Y bar is area times the centroid of each figure from the bottom. Let us first calculate the total area. So I'm not going to discuss how to calculate the total area because we all know from elementary days that how to calculate the area of rectangle, triangle, something like that. So we get the area which is 155,000 square millimeter. Are you with me, guys? Next, looking at this, basically the right hand of the equation is the total static moment of area. So for rectangle, this is the area which is 500 times 100 multiplied by 50. That's why you really have to get first the, the location of the centroid of each figure from the bottom. For rectangle 2, that's 200 by 300 times 250, which is the centroid of this. And this one is one half 300 by 300. So I did not discuss how to locate the centroid of each figure because you should know it by this time. So calculating the centroid, you have 170.968. So that is the location of our neutral axis. Next, since you all know this one, okay, the next thing to do is use the transfer formula, which is summation of I bar plus summation of AD squared. What do these terms mean? So let's start with the summation of I bar. What is this? What are those? So let me give you a, back, uh, a review about this. Basically, summation of I bar is the sum of the centroidal moment of inertia of each figure about the axis which is parallel to our neutral axis. So say, for example, 
if you're going to observe this this rectangle, you know, for a fact that the centroidal moment of inertia of a rectangle is a BD cube over 12, to make it short, wherein B is the dimension of a rectangle parallel to the axis of inertia. Since you are getting the centroidal moment of inertia of each figure about the axis parallel to this neutral axis, so definitely for rectangle 1, B is 500, so on and so forth for other rectangle. So for rectangle 2, B is 200, and D is 300 cube. Next, for triangle, we have BD cube over 36. Some I just put it there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate it and then I'm going to store it to A. So that when I calculate the centroidal moment of inertia, I'm not going to type the so many numbers here to add to the summation of AD squared. You just calculate it and store it to A. So if we're going to get the moment of inertia, we just type alpha A and then the value of summation of AD squared. Next thing to know is this, summation of AD square. Why is it very challenging? Because the distance in this term is the distance of the centroid of each figure from the neutral axis. Very tedious, so you have to plot it, like the one shown. And then you're going to calculate it. Say, for example, for rectangle 1, the area is 500 by 100. Multiply by the distance of the centroid of this to the neutral axis, which is 120.968 square millimeter. For other things, so this one is the area of the rectangle 2 and then square of the distance and of course for triangle. So we have 1144.65 times 10 to the 6th power millimeter to the 4th. I hope you're with me. You press alpha A in the calculator and then add this one. So what is the technique? This is the figure before, and then like the way we did before, we divide it again into composite figures. Sir, so in using the technique, what is the first step? After dividing that, of course, you have to get the reference line. Sir, so what is the function of this reference line? In the technique, if you want to get the moment of inertia, it is not necessary to get first the centroid or the neutral axis of the section. So from this bottom, you locate the centroid of each figure. Put your calculator into a statistical mode. So let me show you first the Casio brand. And next, I'm going to show you also the Canon. Look at this. This is the formula. This is the formula to get the centroidal moment of inertia. Okay. The first thing to do is to sum all the centroidal moment of inertia of each figure like the one I show you before. So how to do it in a calculator? So this is my take. If you're taking the sum and storing it to 8, you should go first with the mode number 1 of your calculator, the computational mode for easier typing. Okay? So say for example, that's 500 by 100 cube over it is very easy to type in the mode 1 because it is a natural display. So like the one you show, it says it's 500 by 100 cube all over 12. Okay. Plus, what's this? 200 by 300 cube. After typing it, you have to press this shift and then store it to letter A. So you have 716666. 0.7. So this value is automatically stored into letter A. And then we're going to press AC there. Then you're going to put your calculator into a statistical mode. You press this mode and then you see stat mode here, number 3. Okay, and then you have 8 functions there. So basically you're going to use the linear mode which is a plus bx as the one shown by the cursor. Okay? So that is A plus bx. Okay? So you press number 2. And then you have this tables of x and y. But basically, guys, if you're going to, to use this technique, you, you need the frequency table. So how are you going to turn it on? You press shift setup. You search for the stat function here. So it's not here. So you have to press this one, the arrow down. And then you see the stat okay which is on number four it says it asks you if it's if you're going to turn it on or off so of course you press number one to turn it on so you have this one what are you going to put on those 
tables. Okay? So you have this x, y, and frequency. Basically, guys, since we are just getting the centroidal moment of inertia about the axis parallel to the horizontal, we're going to use only one of the x and y. So since you are using, you are getting the moment of inertia about the horizontal axis, therefore, all of the distance in this in this figure is vertical. So therefore, we're going to use the y table only for for the center in letter y you're going to input all of the centroid so how about x we don't need the x table so that's why you can put anything you want there so say for example i just want to put one 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 are there cases in which we're going to use the x table yes specifically if you are getting the moment of inertia about x and y you are getting the centroidal moment of inertia of x and y if you are solving the critical slenderness ratio for the compression members. Look at this. So, say for example, for rectangle 1, what is the distance of the center of rectangle 1? So, take note, guys, that on y table, you're going to put here the location of the center of each rectangle from the reference line. So, say for example, for rectangle 1, that is 50 millimeter, And for rectangle 2, that is 250 and for the triangle that is 200 so how about the frequency the frequency is the area of each figure so for rectangle one that is equal to 500 by 100 next for rectangle two that is 200 by 300 next for triangle, that is one half base times height. What is the length of the base? Of course, that is 300 and multiply by the height, which is equal to 300. So you're going to input all of this data in the calculator. I told you that you can put any numbers you want in X column. So I just put one here. And then for Y values, I go, I'm going to put all of the distances of each centroid. So that is 50. Sorry, that's 50. What is this? 250. And then this is 200. I'm going to input all of the corresponding areas of it. So for rectangle 1, that's 500 by 100. That is 200 by 300. Next, that is 1 half or 0.5 times 300 by 300. Okay? What is the formula? Okay. So the formula is like this. Centroidal moment of inertia summation of centroidal moment of inertia plus summation of ad squared basically guys the technique is all about getting the summation of ad squared because this is the term that makes the calculation a very tedious task summation of i bar i i think we get we already get this we store it into letter a i just press it alpha a in my calculator for the summation of a d squared you're not going to get the d distance one by one from the neutral axis press this formula for summation of a d squared you're going to use the formula n times the standard deviation y is square like this so let us put it here n sigma y is squared so you have to press alpha a plus n sigma y squared where is m you have to press shift and then number one, you have this number four, which is one N. And then shift, stat, and then you have number four, which is number six. And sigma y squared, which is equal to 1861. And if you want to show it in terms of time is 10 to the six, I have to divide it by one million. So that is 1861.02 times 10 to the sixth power millimeter to the fourth. So our answer is 1861.02 times 10 to the 6th millimeter to the fourth. As you can see, there is a little discrepancy on the answer before. Why? Because we round off some of the distance before. So the distance we are using in conventional method is not really accurate because we rounded it off. That's why there is a little discrepancy. Okay. For me, the technique is more accurate than the one shown by the conventional because here all of the the numbers in the solution is a direct input in the calculator no rounding off in the solution say for example you want to know 
Where is the centroid of this figure, which is 170.968? You press AC and then you press shift stat and then you have to get number 4. You show the value of number 5 which is Y bar and the answer is 170.96. Uh, I, ju I just rounded it off to 170.968. Okay, so that is the location of the centroid what if i'm going to use other calculator say for example i have a canon calculator it's the same thing the type for the summation of the centroidal moment of inertia is 500 by 100 cube we type the expression which is a summation of centroidal moment of inertia of each figure and then we're going to store it to letter a so we have to press shift store a and then you're going to input this data in the statistics mode. Uh, you're going to press mode also. And then you see here the start mode, which is located on number three. There is no A plus BX. It is expressed by words. So for A plus BX, that is linear. So number two, that is LIN. LIN stands for linear regression. So it's number two. We input this. We need to turn on the frequency. You have to press shift and then mode for setup and then search for a statistics function here. So that's number four. And then you're going to turn on the frequency. So that's number one. We put here one because we don't need values here in X. And then for Y, we have 50, 250, 200. Next. 500 by 100. I just put all the values here, the same the same as the one that we input in cash calculate. How are you going to calculate the moment of inertia? So you have to press CA here. Going back again to the formula, the central moment of inertia about the neutral axis is summation of I bar plus summation of A D squared. So I told you that this summation of A D squared is calculated using n sigma y squared the symbol for for standard deviation y is not sigma y it is written as y sigma n here you have to press a plus n so instead of sigma y you're going to press y sigma n squared so that's alpha a plus for n you you have to press apps and then you see s bar here number five and then you see number one, which is N. And then apps, number five, S bar, which is number six, Y sigma N, square. And then that's the answer. So divide it by one, one times N to the six. So the answer is equal to 1861.02. So this is 1861.02 times 10 to the six millimeter to the fourth. So that's the only difference of Canon and Casio here. The way the standard deviation y is written. Okay. So what if there is a hole in the figure? Okay. Say, for example, I have this problem. Determine the centroidal moment of inertia for the cross section of the beam as shown. Actually, that figure is the same with the previous problem. I just put a, a circular hole in the middle, which is the centroid is being reflected in the figure. That is 200 millimeter from the bottom. You divide the figure into composite figure like the one we did before. And then look at this. Here is the hole. You get the center of each figure. And then by Varignon's theorem, you're going to get the total area. So basically, this is the area of rectangles and triangles. You have to subtract the area of the circular hole which has a radius of 50 millimeter so that your answer is 147146.018 square millimeter you multiply all the areas by the centroid from the bottom and take a close look on the whole section it is being subtracted from the total just remember it if you have hole just subtract it that's as simple as that so that your answer is 169.418 millimeter and then you have to use Again, the summation of I bar plus summation of AD squared. And then, take the sum of the centroidal moment of inertia of each figure. For the centroidal moment of inertia of the whole, you have to subtract it in the expression and then store it to A. For summation of AD squared, of course, you have to get 
all of the distance of the centroid of each figure from the neutral axis. Next. And then that is how you calculate the summation of AD squared. When it comes to the whole, you have to calculate it as usual. But instead of addition, you have to subtract it. That's why you have an answer which is positive 1137.38 times 10 to the 6th power millimeter to the 4th. I hope you got me on that. Adding the value of the sum of centroidal moment of inertia, you have 1849.14 times 10 to the 6th power millimeter to the 4th. Can I use the same technique we used before in this figure with hole? Take a look on this. Let us just try. Let us type this thing in our calculator. In our mode 1, let us type the sum of the centroidal moment of inertia. 500 by 100 cube. We're going to store it to A. So shift is store A. You go over with mode 3, 2. That is stat and linear A plus BX. So you have here X, Y, and the frequency. For rectangle, since we have four figures, let me just put one, four ones here now. For the centroid, let us start with the rectangle with the 500 by 100. Actually, this is... Uh, I, I forgot to put it there, the 100, the 100 millimeter height. So that is what? So the center of the rectangle one is technically 50 mm from the bottom. Next, for the second rectangle, we have 250. And next, for the triangle, we have 200. And for the hole, you're going to put the centroid as a positive value. So that is what? That is 200, okay? So for the frequency for rectangle 1, we have 500 by 100. Next, we have what? 200 by 300. And next is you have here 0 0.5, 300 by 300. Okay? And next, of course, if there is a hole, you're going to put here negative. Okay? So that would be negative pi times 50 square. I hope you're with me. So for example, this problem is all about flexural stresses in beam. So you have to get y bar. Mode 3 number 2. That is what? So that's it. You see it here. And then say for example, you want to, of course you get the centroid. You have to press shift start number 4, which is located on number 5. Okay, and the answer is the same. What's the answer than before? That's 169.418. So we have the same answer then. Okay, so 169.418. How about the moment of inertia? So it's the same thing. It's summation of I bar plus summation of AD squared. And let us just try to use the technique we did before. Okay. Alpha A plus shift stat number four one shift stat number four six. So let us divide it by one million. So the answer is eighteen forty nine point fourteen times ten to the sixth millimeter to the fourth, which is the same answer we have on conventional solution the technique does not fail if there is a hole but wait don't celebrate yet let me show you another problem regarding this with holes how about these problems determine the centroidal moment of inertia for the cross section for the beam as shown here you have two holes now and then i just eliminate the rectangle below to make the discussion easier let me show you the conventional i, I bet you know uh, you know already how to Calculate the location of the neutral axis. That is 235.385 mm. So next. Uh, of course, for summation of I bar again, when it comes to the hole, you have to subtract it. Look at this. Since there are two holes, you have to subtract it twice. For the summation of AD squared, when it comes to the hole, you have to subtract it like this. So that the answer is negative 910.203 times 10 to the 6. So, sir, that's very suspicious because the summation of AD squared is a negative value. So, does it mean, sir, that the moment of inertia might be a negative value? Moment of inertia 
cannot be a negative value that is always positive. Take note, there is a value of A here, which is technically you're going to add for in the summation of A D squared. So the answer is still positive, 3879.98 times 10 to the 6. So let me tell you this. Summation of A D squared can be a negative value, but the final value of moment of inertia cannot be a negative value. Sir, can we use the technique we use on the previous problem? Let us go back to the figure. We get the sum of all the centroidal moment of inertia of each figure and then store it to A. So let us type again in mode 1 the summation of the centroidal moment of inertia of each figure. So for that, that is, we have to store it into A. So the shift store A. So you have an answer like this. And then we press AC. We go to mode 3, 2 and have a table. You have X, Y, and the frequency. So look at this. How many figures do we have? We have four. I just put in this X column, one. For Y, all of the centroids. For rectangle, that's 300. For triangle, that's 200. And of course, for two circles, the lower circle is 200 and the higher circle is located 450 mm above the reference line. For the frequency, we have what? 200 by 600. Next, for another triangle, that is one half base time height, which is technically 0.5 by 200 by 600. The length of the base is 200. Why? It's because 400 minus 200 is 200. Okay. And let me say that this is circle one, and let me say that this is circle two. So, since they they have the same radius, therefore they have the same area, but uh, both of them are negative area because they are whole so that's negative pi 100 mm so negative pi times 100 square and for this one that is negative pi times 100 square okay so if you want to get the value of y bar in case you need it you just get the value of y bar in the var so let us input all of this data in the calculator so you have to go again to mode 3 2 Okay, so let us try to get the centroid. So press AC and then you press shift, stat number 4. So the answer for that is equal to 235.38. Our answer before, let us check if that is, yes, that is 235.385. So we have the same exact answer. And now let us use the formula for the centroidal moment of inertia. A summation of I bar plus summation of A D square. And let me press N sigma Y squared here. That's alpha A plus shift stat 4, 1, shift stat 4, 6, square. The answer is different from the conventional, which is right. Of course, the right answer is the previous answer. So, sir, it's a disaster. <laughs> because using this technique with whole does not always give us a correct answer. What is the problem here? Basically, if you're going to observe, the 4790 blah, 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 is actually the summation of the centroidal moment of inertia. If you will try to calculate the summation of AD squared, alone in which you are using the n sigma y squared that is a zero value which is in fact that is actually not a zero so here is the problem with holes if the summation of a d squared became a negative value your calculator cannot calculate that value that is the limitation of n sigma y squared so do you mean sir that the caltech is not as powerful as we think that it is that it can cater all types of problems. The Caltech is still powerful even though there is a hole. But n sigma y squared is not applicable in all types of figure with holes because n sigma y squared fails to calculate the transfer term, which is a summation of a d squared with a negative value. It fails to calculate the negative summation of AD squared. So what are we going to do, sir? If the summation of AD squared is a negative value, do not use N sigma Y squared. You better use this one. 
If the summation of AD squared is a negative value, don't use N sigma Y squared. Instead, for summation of AD squared, you have to use the formula summation of Y squared minus NY bar is square. What are the values that we're going to input in the calculator? Basically the same. It's just the formula that we're going to change here because of the negative summation of AD squared. To get the centroidal moment of inertia, you have to get summation of I bar, okay, which is alpha A, plus this one, which is summation of Y squared minus N Y bar. That would be alpha A plus, what is this? Summation of Y squared. So you press shift stat number 3, which is located on number 3. Minus shift 1, number 4, N. And then again, shift, stat 4, so Y bar, that is taken as N Y bar is square. Press equals, and then divide it by 1 million. Okay, and the answer is 3879.98 times 10 to the 6th power millimeter to the 4th which is our answer before, so we get it right. To summarize this concept about the technique, summation of AD squared is only equal to N sigma Y squared if the value of summation of AD squared is a positive value. That's why I'm telling you this. If a certain figure has no holes, I am recommending you this formula because it is easier to type and take note. If the figure has no hole, it is very impossible to have a summation of AD squared value, which is negative. That's why if you if the figure has no hole, you just use this one. But what if there is a hole? The, the formula I've shown you, summation Y squared minus NY bar is square. This formula can be used whether summation of AD squared is positive or negative. So, sir, do you mean to say that this formula can be used in the place of n sigma y squared? Yes, in fact, this is more powerful than this because it can calculate the summation of AD squared, whether it is positive or a negative value. So, what is my recommendation then? So, you are going to use this formula only if the figure has hole. Okay? As simple as that. Okay? Thank you very much.